Hello, so this is about the normal bar model in more detail with some numerical examples. Um, so as I said in the previous video, the assumption is that the portfolio returns, the H-day discounted portfolio returns, have a normal distribution with some parameters which we can call mu h and sigma h squared. So um, x is the random variable of h-day returns for the portfolio. We assume that they're, whatever point in time we measure them, they're always the same mu h and sigma h squared for the parameters. So they're iid. Um, and that assumption implies this formula in red here. Uh, I am going to prove it on the next slide, but you don't really need to know it. It's just for completeness. Um, here, I'm just going to show you how to use it. So um, we've got uh, the percentage var with the two parameters is our quantile, phi to the minus one, times the standard deviation minus the mean. And you can either write the quantile like this or like that, because as we know with the standard normal distribution, the um, we can either draw the phi function like this, yeah, that's our phi, goes from zero to one and goes off to infinity and there. Or we can draw the density function like this, that's little phi, okay, for our random variable z for a standard normal. Um, and two ways of looking at phi to the minus one for this alpha, that area can be alpha, or up the top here, the upper area could be alpha, same area, it's all symmetric around zero. So that's like minus 1.6, um, minus 1.645, if alpha is equal to um, 0 0.05, alpha is 0 0.05, five um, and this would be plus 1.645 and this is the phi to the minus one of 0 0.05 and this the plus value is phi to the minus one of 0 0.95 okay um or with the phi function here, then if we draw some line and we take 0 0.05 and 0 0.95 there, and we go there, this would be 0 0.5 of course, and that would be zero. And then we go up there, um, so that would be minus 1.645 and this would be plus 1.645 for the heights now. And that the phi function is the black line, phi to the minus one goes backwards. So the arguments of phi to the minus one are something between zero and one. And one. All right. So that is all that just to explain that... Um, this phi to the minus one, one minus alpha is the same as minus phi to the minus one of alpha. Use which one you prefer, all right? So here's an example. Suppose we set the mean to zero. We often do that, I'll explain why in a minute. And somehow estimate a standard deviation of daily returns. So H is one day. Um, and the standard deviation of daily returns is 0.8%. So our assumption is that X1 is IID normal zero, 0 0.8 squared, because we always put the squared value there, yeah? And then our VAR with the parameters one and say 5% is going to be phi to the minus one of 0 0.95, in other words, 1.645 times the sigma. Sigma H is a standard deviation of 0.8%. And we've assumed this thing, the mean is zero. Okay, so 1.645 times 0.8 is 1.316%.
Now, don't forget that these are actually discounted daily returns. Um, so we, you know, if we earn the risk-free rate, which is all you could expect, really, you discount it by a risk-free rate and your discounted return is expected to be zero. So unless you're a portfolio manager and you can somehow convince your clients that you will earn them more than the risk-free rate, we would always assume that the mean is zero. But anyway, the formula, actually, when we look at it, it, theoretically, you should take off the mean here. So let's go through this little proof. Not that you need to be examined on it or anything. You can skip this bit of the video if you're happy just to accept the formula as it is. If you want a little bit more insight, then our assumption is um, that XH has a normal distribution with these parameters, mu h and sigma h squared, okay? Oh, hang on, I shared my dot cam. Here we are, that's our assumption. And we also know that with the standard normal, if z is standard normal, then we have our um, uh, phi to the minus one alpha, is the number that we need to look at, or well, minus phi to the minus one alpha will be the relevant quantile. Now, we want to find that number. Let's call it um, the var of H alpha is going to be minus the alpha quantile. And I'm going to call the alpha quantile little x H alpha, okay? So in our distribution here, this is XH, and this number here is XH alpha, where this area is alpha. So that's what we want to find. This is now mu, not zero, mu H actually. And we've got plus three sigma H minus three sigma H there. And the question is, how do we find this number here when we do know the phi's for the standard normal, that we know, but we don't know what that is. Um, in words, this diagram can be written in words, the probability that XH is less than XH alpha is equal to alpha, yeah? That's the same thing as the diagram, but just written in words. Now, if we apply the standard normal transformation, so the probability that XH minus the mean divided by the standard deviation is less than something or other. Now, if what we do to one side of an inequality, if we do the same thing to the other side, we don't change the result. The result is alpha. And as long as we don't multiply by a negative number, we still have the same thing or divide by a negative number, that would change things. But we're just gonna take off something and divide by something positive. So we've got little h alpha here, minus mu h over sigma h. We haven't changed anything, okay? So these are equivalent. Why did I do that? Well, I did that because we've got the standard normal variable here. This is the standard normal transformation. So this is Z, which is phi zero one. And we know that by definition, the probability that Z is less than phi to the minus one alpha is equal to alpha. So this thing here, must be equal to this thing here. Those two are the same thing. In other words, X alpha, X H alpha, which is what we want to find, minus mu over sigma H is phi to the minus one of alpha. Or put another way, X H alpha is phi to the minus one alpha times sigma h plus mu h. I've taken the mu h over that sign, so it's got a plus there. Um, but we don't want var 
to be x var is this pen here. This thing, the var, is minus of that. And we found that. So we need to multiply it by minus one. So we've got a minus here and a minus there and a minus there. And that's the formula. Okay? Because this thing minus phi to the minus one alpha is, oops, we can, we can write it like that if we like, which is what I've got on the paper there, or I can change that thing around and call it phi to the minus one of one minus alpha. Same thing. Um, all right, so, now, we, I'm going to give you a couple of examples in a minute, where I'm also going to show how to convert um, from the percentage far to a dollar value. Um, and all we do is we multiply it by the current portfolio value, and T being the current time, okay? So if the percentage var is, say, 8%, and the portfolio value at time T, the time we're measuring the var, is, um, say, $20 million, then the var in dollar terms is just 8% of 20 million, which is $160,000. And as I mentioned many times, we may not be able to get a percentage VAR anyway, in which case we just use the, the, the sigma and the mu from the PNL distribution, and then we use the formula without multiplying it by the portfolio value because these will already be in dollar amounts the standard deviation and the mean. So here's one example. Calculate the 1% one day VAR for a portfolio with value $10 million. And it's expected to return the discount rate. Okay, but so that, when you see this phrase, which is expected to return the discount rate, that's the same thing as saying that the dis discounted return is expected to be zero. In other words, the mean is zero. And then we've got a volatility of 20%. Assume the discounted returns are normally IID distributed, so we can use the normal VAR formula, and that there are 250 trading days per annum. Now, why do I wanna know the trading days per annum? That's because I've got an annual volatility here and I need a one day standard deviation, not a volatility because it's a daily VAR and I need that sigma needs to be a standard deviation, not a volatility. So I get the one day standard deviation using the square root of time rule by dividing 20%, not multiplying because we're going, the, we're going scaling down from, an, from a volatility to a standard deviation. So it's 0.2 divided by square root of 250. So sigma is actually 0 0.01265. And because we haven't got a mean correction to use, we've only got the one term, we need to just find the 1% quantile, which is 2.32635. We don't have all those decimal places. If you don't want 2.326 or 2.3264, we'll do... Anyway, I'd always, um, you know, you can find them in Excel and um, or if there's a question in a quiz, you'll always be given it. So you don't have to worry about um, finding these things. I'll show you how to get them in Excel soon. So that's the 1%. It's not 1.645 because it's a 1%. 1.645 is for the 5%. So it's 2.32635 times our standard deviation, which is 0 0.01265. Um, and so that turns out to be 2.9426%. And now we can multiply by the value of the portfolio, $10 million, to get the VAR in value terms, which is $29,426. In other words, 
we are 99% sure that we won't lose more than around $30,000 if we don't rebalance the portfolio over the next day. And here's another example. What is the 10% VAR over a one year horizon of 2 million invested in a fund whose annual returns in excess of the discount rate are assumed to be normally distributed with mean 5%. So returns in excess of the discount rate. So that means the discounted return in annual terms is expected to be 5% and if the volatility is 12%. So now we can, it's a one year VAR, so we can use the volatility as the standard deviation. This is, volatility is an annual standard deviation. But we have to use this correction for the mean. So um, we've got, what is it, 10%. So it's the phi to minus 1.9, which is 1.281552. That's our critical value here. Um, and multiply it by the volatility, 0.12 or 12%, minus 5%, and that gives us 10.3786. And with $2 million invested, we have to multiply this percent by $2 million to get the result in dollar terms. So the VAR, the 10% one year VAR is going to be $207. 570, $207,572. Okay, so I'll do the next video separately, I think. <laughs>